Welcome to our first ever Uncle Drinks Online. We're really pleased that you could make it. Um, my name's Johnny, I'm a drummer and a pianist and I'm head of artist relations here at Uncle. So I'm the person who's responsible for making sure that you get the most out of the platform. Mm. Um, usually Uncle Drinks is an event that we put on in person in a pub in central London. We put on some drinks, everyone comes over and um, we discuss what we've been working on. And it's a really lovely event. Um, but of course, it being locked down, we can't do that at the moment. So you may have noticed I'm not in a pub. I'm in my bedroom in North London, streaming from there. Um, one of the benefits though, that we're really excited about to having Uncle Drinks Online is it means that people can join us from across the UK. So if you're not from London, we're particularly pleased to have you with us and um, we're interested to hear your thoughts. Um, also, I wanted to say thank you for being flexible and bearing with us when we postponed the event. As I'm sure you're aware, yesterday, the music industry held a blackout, um, stopping business in, in, as usual in protest against the murder of George Floyd over in the US and what it represents. So, um, so we moved the event to today in order to show support for that, uh, that protest and um, to stand in solidarity with all our BME members as well. Um, just some housekeeping. Um, as you'll have noticed, by default, everyone other than Encore team members is muted and has their video uh, paused. Uh, so if you have a question at any point, please do drop it in the Q&A. Uh, you should see a button labeled Q&A. Um, if you click on that, you can type in a question and our team members will be on hand to answer those in real time. Um, also, this video is being recorded. So if you miss any, any of it um, or you need to drop out at any moment, don't worry. We'll email it round afterwards and you can you catch up there. Um, we have a great lineup. Um, James is going to be talking to us first of all about our response to COVID. Then I'm going to be introducing personalized music messages and talking about how you can be successful with that, including an interview from Brazilian Sway, who are an incredible duo. They've done really well with personalized music messages. They've recently hit just over 1,000 pounds of earnings from PMMs in the last month. Um, so stick around for that. Then James King, our CTO, will be introducing a new app we've been developing for music teachers. And we're gonna wrap up with a live streaming workshop and performance from uh, John Jun Kavlikolu, who's a brilliant performer. I did a sound check with him on Monday and I can honestly say it's the best quality live streaming I've ever heard. So if you want to learn how to make the most from live streaming, do wait until the end and, and hear John Jun give a performance and talk about his setup there. Um, but that's about enough from me for the moment. So I'd like to introduce James McCauley, who's our CEO and co-founder, to talk about how we started Encore and our response to COVID. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Cool. Thank you very much, Johnny. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen now. Uh, can everybody see uh, these slides? Yes. Can one of the Encore team Tell me that you can see yes, this. Can see it. Yep. Yes. Thank you very much. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, first of all, for coming along to Encore's first ever virtual drinks. Um, we've been hosting these for years in London, and every time we host them, we have musicians from all over the UK asking when we're going to do drinks in Manchester or in Birmingham or in Glasgow. Uh, so it's really great that we can welcome Encore members from all over the UK um, to Encore Drinks. I am going to give a, a pretty brief update. Um, I think that uh, some of the items on the agenda after me are far more interesting uh, than listening to me talk. So I will keep this brief. Um, I just wanted to introduce you to myself and actually to the whole Encore team so that you know who we are. Um, as Johnny said, I'll give you a very, very quick history of Encore in about 30 seconds. Um, and then I'll focus um, entirely on what we've done to respond um, to coronavirus um, and, and how we've uh, moved quickly and worked really hard um, to support you during this time. Um, it goes without saying, and I'm sure you've heard this a um, hundred times, um, coronavirus has, has really sort of devastated the music industry. Um, it's, it's incredibly difficult for individual musicians right now and, and we know that and we're, we're working so hard to try and help you make some money during this time. Um, it's hit every business in the music industry as well. So um, at Encore, 
um, we've had a, a pretty tough few months as well. And um, speaking to other uh, music agencies and other agencies in the events business, um, it's been a pretty difficult few months. Um, we do seem to be seeing some sort of light at the end of the tunnel now. And it's great that all of the conversations are focused on um, moving forward and, and how we can recover. So I'm going to uh, talk about what we've done over the last, it's been three months, um, three months uh, since we went into lockdown. Um, don't know where that time went. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and keep this um, pretty brief. Uh, so first of all, just a very quick introduction to, to me. Um, I'm a musician myself. Uh, I went to a music school um, as a child and actually my parents met in an orchestra. Um, I play a number of different instruments. I, I play the cello uh, and this is uh, me playing on the X Factor a few years ago. Um, I also play the piano. Um, I sing and I used to be in a barbershop group. I'll move on from this slide very quickly. Uh, and I play the bass and the guitar um, and I, I love music. Um, I've Basically, I've been a musician um, my entire life, even as a child. Um, you couldn't keep me away from the piano, and that's me and my brother um, screaming something extremely melodious. Um, so uh, that's a quick introduction uh, to me. Um, I now want to introduce you to uh, the Encore team um, and let them tell you uh, who they are and, and what they do. Uh, so um, hang on, I've gone to the wrong slide. Um, Johnny, how would you like to do this? Um, shall everyone unmute one at a time and just give a very quick introduction to themselves? Yeah, I think so. Brilliant. Um, Johnny, you've already introduced yourself. Uh, so shall we go with uh, Kiara and then Perrine, first of all? Yep, I'm not muted, am I? No. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, so I'm Kiara. I am on the bookings team here. So I'm the person who's um, along with the sales team calling all of our customers, helping them find exactly what they need with us and probably been in touch with with lots of you um, basically helping them get to the stage where they, you know, they know what they're looking for. They know what they want. They find the perfect band or act um, and uh, yeah, to help get more bookings for you guys, really. Um, the thing that's great about Encore is it's a really small team. So there's, I guess, so much more that we're all doing and all kind of dipping our fingers into lots of different things at the moment. Um, trying to you know, build everything that James will go on to explain. So that's been really exciting. Um, but yeah, primarily I'm one of the people that our customers are speaking to and speaking to lots of you as well. Cool, thank you. Perrine? Hi everyone. Oh, am I muted? No, I'm good. <laughs> it's, uh, well, first of all, it's really nice to, to meet you all. It's very exciting to, um, to be able to have events like this online now. My name's Perrine, um, I'm a singer. And well, as Kiara said, we all tend to do a lot of different things here at Encore as part of a really small team. But uh, for the past three months, I've been fully focused on customer service. Uh, there's a lot of that to, to be done at the moment. And we're handling a very high volume of uh, booking cancellations and trying really hard to save and postpone as many of them as we can. So that's what I've been doing for the past few months. Excellent. Uh, now let's hear from uh, George and uh, Ilkin. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's George. Um, I'm primarily a producer and a writer, but I also play a bit of guitar and piano um, and a few other bits and bobs. Um, and my job is uh, primarily uh, musician support. So I'm answering any, uh, any of your email tickets that come in, um, finding problems uh, with the site and reporting them to the tech team. Um, and uh, getting fixes live basically um, and I've also been doing quite a lot of customer support recently because we've had a whole influx of cancellations and things like that which I'm sure you can appreciate but um, yeah primarily it's a uh, uh, musician support and answering questions for you so do send me an email if you have any issues. Cool thanks George. Joel? I think it's me right? Oh sorry it's you. <laughs> and then Joel. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Ilken. I'm the lead developer at Encore and I'm responsible for um, developing all the features that you like and hopefully um, some of the bugs that you don't like from time to time. <laughs> so, and I work closely with our CTO, uh, James King and designer Claudia. Um, I'm aiming to get all the features that you want on the platform done in a quick time. Oh, thank you, Ilkin. Uh, now we hear from Joel, uh, Joel, Claudia, and James. 
So hi everyone, it's um, great. I'm Joel, as introduced, and uh, great to see such an awesome turnout as well. It does um, make me realise how much I miss doing this at the pub. Um, it's certainly been hard for all of us. Um, but yeah, I lead sales and partnerships here at uh, Encore. I'll know a lot of you really well anyway. We've spoke most multiple times over um, bookings, inquiries, uh, personalised music messages, etc. Um, Instrument-wise, I'm not quite as uh, accomplished as a lot of the people in this video chat. Um, I'm a pretty average guitar player, but enjoy it nonetheless. And um, yeah, it's me. Thank you. Claudia? Hi everyone, I'm Claudia, and as, as Ilkan put it, uh, I'm the designer here at Encore. Ooh, this is <laughs> interesting, sorry. Um, and uh, yeah, I will work closely with James and Ilkan in, in well in kind of designing the website and app that you guys use so yeah any feedback throughout this um session just give us a shout in the q a or the chat we'll be paying close attention uh and yeah mostly a singer i dabble a bit in instruments but i'm i'm yeah as, as joel put it i'm pretty I'm not as as well versed as some others in the team <laughs> And hi everyone, I'm, I'm James, uh, I'm co-founder and the CTO here, which means that I uh, head up the team working on the website and the apps. And I mainly play classical piano, but dabble a bit in drums and guitars as well. Excellent, thank you everyone. Um, okay, so I'll get into uh, my presentation now. Um, I'll just start sharing my screen again, uh, this one. Uh, yes, okay. Um, just before we do that, I thought I'd give you a very, very rapid history of Encore. Um, we started Encore to solve uh, the problems that our friends were facing as musicians, basically. Um, where do you find gigs? Where do you find good gigs? Um, how do we help musicians spend less time chasing up money and chasing up invoices um, and more time practicing and, and making music? Um, and James and I started Encore back in 2014. Um, this photo looks a little bit like a couple photo and maybe I should change it, but um, yeah, we started it uh, nearly six years ago. Um, in 2015, a year later, um, we uh, gathered a group of investors together and we raised investment to take Encore uh, all over the UK. Um, we didn't make any revenue for the first uh, 12 months, which meant at one point I was renting out my bedroom on Airbnb and I was sleeping on that mattress uh, when I had guests. Um, in my bedroom just to sort of survive in London um, and get Encore off the ground. Um, so it's been nearly six years of hard work to get us to this point. Um, and now in 2020, um, we're one of the largest providers of live music in Europe, which is really exciting. There are 11 of us uh, based in London. Um, there are 10,000 of you uh, musicians using um, Encore on the web, um, on Android and on iPhone as well with our apps. Um, and we've paid out over four million pounds uh, to musicians in gig fees since we started. So how have we responded to coronavirus? Um, this is a quick summary of everything we've done and I'll walk you through each of these. Um, we've helped customers and musicians uh, with nearly a thousand postponements and cancellations. Um, we've adapted our booking policy so that customers feel more comfortable booking you at a time of great uncertainty. We launched personalized music messages to help you make money when you weren't able to perform outdoors. Um, we've launched a new teaching app specifically for delivering music lessons online. We launched a newsletter for you to keep you up to date on um, how the industry is responding to coronavirus, how you can access financial support from people like Help Musicians, um, and we've also been talking to other music companies um, and getting you discounts and perks uh, for being an Encore member. So first of all, supporting customers and musicians. Um, we have a crack team of customer support specialists, Perrine, George and Alex. And since March, um, they have um, helped nearly a thousand customers either cancel their booking or postpone their booking. Um, when we last checked, I believe 80% of our customers are actually moving a booking that was due to take place maybe this summer. They're pushing it back to later in the year or to next year. Um, so it's great that so many customers are actually moving their events rather than, than cancelling them 
outright. Um, and we've been working round the clock um, to sort of solve these problems for you and to, to resolve uh, these issues. So if you've been involved in any of those um, cancellations or postponements, um, thank you for helping our customer support team and, and being really friendly um, and cooperative and, and just helping us solve um, a thousand problems in the last few months. Um, we adapted our bookings policy as well. Um, customers are obviously quite nervous when it comes to putting down a deposit right now or even committing to a, a booking and, and that makes complete sense. Um, and so to adapt to that, um, we've adjusted our booking policy um, and, and basically uh, designed it so that if a customer does need to move their event, um, we'll help them as much as possible. Um, and um, the feedback from customers on this new like, policy has been really, really positive. Um, we launched personalized music messages. In March, um, when it felt like the world was ending, um, we had a brainstorm and uh, the team started thinking about ways that musicians could earn money um, at home. And the top idea that we landed on was the idea of personalized music messages. Um, it's a very simple concept. A customer comes to you and says, hi, I'd like you to sing this song uh, to send to my wife or to my gran who's in hospital. Um, and you record the song for them, they pay you for that video, um, and then they send a personalized song to someone that they care about that they can't be with at the moment. Um, so in the space of two weeks, um, we had this idea, we built it and we, we launched it to our customers um, and it went down so well. Um, not only have we had hundreds of these messages bought by customers and delivered um, to people all over the world, um, and not only have we um, made so many people um, happy, and we've, we've seen dozens of people have been crying when they've received these videos, and they're just extremely emotional, um, but the, the story really resonated with the press as well. Um, so um, people like BBC Radio, um, TechCrunch, Business Insider, um, IQ Magazine, they all loved the fact that we were trying to help musicians earn money um, right now. Um, and in the bottom left is one of our musicians, Tom Morley, um, who has uh, been one of the most popular musicians doing music messages. And he went on German TV, uh, on DW News, um, to talk about uh, music messages and how he'd been getting on. Um, so since we launched Music Messages, we've had nearly, um, actually over £10,000 um, has been put into uh, the pockets of Encore musicians as a result of this. And we've got some musicians who have already made over £1,000 from this, which is fantastic. Um, and we're going to hear more from Brazilian Sway on that later. Um, we're also working on a new teaching app. Uh, as soon as lockdown came into place, um, I'm sure most of you teach music. And I'm sure most of you quickly moved your lessons to, to Zoom or to Skype or to FaceTime. And these platforms, they are okay, um, but they're not designed for delivering music lessons. And they are actually not um, safeguarded in the way that they should be when it comes to teaching children. Um, there are a few risks involved. I'm sure you've heard about the security problems with Zoom. So we have built an app specifically for teaching music lessons and we've already had nearly a thousand lessons delivered through this app. Um, James King will talk about that later on. Uh, George has launched our newsletter called This Week in Music. Um, if you haven't got it, then it may be in the spam folder of your email. Uh, so do have a look for it. Um, but it's an incredible newsletter that George has been working on for the last four weeks with news um, about what's been going on in the music industry, um, updates on how you can access financial support if, if you're going through difficulty at the moment. And every week we um, put a spotlight on projects that Encore members are working on. Um, and it's, it's been incredible. So do keep an eye out for that in your inbox. Um, we've also been speaking to other music companies about discounts for you. Um, we know that every single musician right now is strapped for cash and we're trying to make it easier um, for you to invest in any equipment that you need or memberships or insurance. Um, you might already be aware that you can save 20% on Allianz Musical Instrument Insurance with us. If you go to the Encore dashboard, um, there's a button there and you can save 20% straight away. Um, if you want to join the ISM, you can get 10% off your membership 
um, through Encore. And we've also got a lot of different deals for um, photo shoots and video shoots, which aren't really possible right now, but hopefully in the next few months we can start shooting videos and getting new promotional material again. We've also been speaking to musicroom.com and we haven't officially announced this yet, but um, you can actually get 10% off all sheet music and all teaching materials at musicroom.com. Um, this is live, we just haven't announced it. So if you are about to buy some sheet music, just use the code ENCORE10 at checkout um, and you'll get 10% off anything at Music Room. Um, and it's worth noting as well that we're currently speaking to 20 or 30 other companies um, who are interested in, in coming up with discounts for you as well. So keep an eye out for that. Um, I just wanted to finally talk about uh, the road to recovery and just to give you an idea of um, how customers are behaving right now. Um, so this graph on the right shows you how many inquiries we've been receiving every week for the last year. Um, you can see that we had an incredibly strong start to the year. So in January and February this year, we saw record levels of inquiries um, on Encore. Um, and you probably noticed you were getting lots of emails and lots of app notifications and hopefully lots of bookings. Um, then uh, coronavirus struck and obviously customers stopped thinking about booking musicians. Um, so you can see in this graph, um, we hit a low point um, that coincided with the first week of lockdown. Um, but the good news is that since then, every week we've been getting more inquiries. And as we start to ease out of lockdown and as um, gatherings um, are sort of looking more and more likely, um, customers are feeling more confident about booking musicians. And actually we've been surveying our customers um, and asking them, uh, how confident are you that if you have an event in 2021, um, how confident are you that it will take place? And obviously at the start of lockdown, uh, there was very little confidence. Um, there was extremely high uncertainty and, and nobody really knew what was going to um, happen next week, let alone next year. Um, but in the last couple of weeks, um, pretty much every single customer we've spoken to, if they've got an event taking place next year, they are optimistic that it will go ahead. 79% um, of them are optimistic or really optimistic and one in five are cautiously optimistic. So customers are starting to feel better about booking music and that means that you should start to see more inquiries and more bookings coming in again over the next few weeks. Finally, um, I just wanted to say thank you for listening to me talk about this um, and crucially thank you for supporting Encore. Thank you for um, helping with any cancellations or postponements um, that have come your way. Thank you for sending us feedback and for trying out music messages, for trying out the teaching app. Um, we've really appreciated um, all of the messages of support and encouragement over the last few months. Um, and it's worth noting as well, even though um, the world does feel a little bit sort of bleak at the moment, um, events are going to come back and live music is going to come back. And it's really exciting to think that when we are allowed to gather again and when huge gatherings are taking place, that live music will, will be so appreciated. Um, there hasn't been a time for about 100 years when live music um, has been effectively banned and when we've been unable to, to hear live music together. And I think um, the entire world is going to appreciate what musicians do even more after this. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel and I think the world on the other side of this um, will be um, very favourable for musicians. That's everything from me. Um, that's not the final question I was supposed to have. This is supposed to say any questions. Um, and uh, I believe there might have been some questions coming in on the Q&A um, or in the chat. Johnny, does anyone have a question for me right now or would you like to, to move on? It doesn't actually look like there's anything in the Q&A section. Um, so if you do have a question for James, maybe drop it in there and we can come back to it later on. Um, anything regarding our COVID response, anything you'd like us to be working on at the moment, let us know and James will be able to answer that later. Um, great. Thanks for that, James. I'm now going to share my screen. Um, it's like a kind of little dance, isn't it? Trying to get a zoom right. Uh, can everyone see this now? Can I have a nod? Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm going, as James mentioned, I'm going to be talking about personalised music messages, um, a new feature we launched recently. Um, I'm going to explain 
a bit about how you can get set up and then I'm also going to introduce Brazilian Sway and talk to them about how they've been using the feature. <coughs> so first of all, what are personalized music messages? Um, as James said, back in March when lockdown hit, we had a few long Zoom brainstorming sessions and came up with personalized music messages as um, a way of enabling our musicians to earn money while they were stuck at home. Um, so in, in short, basically what it is, is a, a new service allowing anyone to purchase a bespoke music video from a musician and send it as a gift to a loved one who's stuck in isolation. Um, and we've also decided, well, we decided from the outset actually, that every video should include a donation to the NHS, given the strain that all NHS workers are under. So every video includes a £2.50 donation to the NHS. Um, what types of PMMs are people booking? They tend to be um, birthday gifts, just simple happy birthday songs. We often see people book first dance renditions for wedding anniversaries. Um, and people are often asking for remixes of their favorite songs. So this on the right is an example um, of My Sharona, but with the words changed to my corona for some doctors in South Africa who perhaps have a bit of a dark sense of humor. Um, so it's being used in, in kind of to, to help people who are on the front lines dealing with COVID as well. Which types of musicians are using it at the moment? Well, um, as you might have guessed, it's most popular among singers and singing guitarists and pianists who are able to accompany themselves and are also familiar with changing lyrics and learning new songs. So uh, if you fall into that category, definitely you should be looking into this. Um, but uh, we also see some classical soloists using it. Um, they too tend to be a slightly less popular, but you can see um, Leo on the right here. He's a cellist who has received a number of, of PMM inquiries. Um, he's been doing covers of classical pieces. Um, and we've also had a few bands sign up. So duos uh, have been quite successful, like Brazilian Sway or, <coughs> or Oh My Duo here. Um, even have a whole mariachi band who've signed up as well. Um, but obviously the more people who get involved, the more difficult it is to produce the video. So um, yeah, and we've also had some people who are really good at multi-tracking who've been able to produce virtual bands. Um, and I thought I'd just quickly show you an example of that rather than trying to explain it. Um, this is Max from a band called The Left Backs. And he produced this great video explaining his personalized music message service and how he multi-tracks himself. Um, I hope you can hear this all right. Let me know if you can't. Hi there, I'm Max Lozowski, sometimes known as Sleep Storm Flop. I'm a musician, and since every single gig in the world has now been cancelled, myself and many of my colleagues are currently out of work. Luckily, the good guys over at Encore have come up with this great idea that they call personalised music messages. But Max, how does this even work? Well, Philippe, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Basically, all you have to do is click the link below, fill in a few forms, and then I'll send you something like this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear whoever you are. Happy birthday to you. Or this. Jonathan, please wash your damn dishes. We're stuck inside together for at least three months. And maybe more. Or maybe. Anyway, you, you get the idea. Not everyone has gone to the, the lengths that Max has to produce an explainer video, but we were really impressed with this. And he's um, been able to charge more for his videos as a result of the quality that he's, he's producing them at. Um, so is this for you? Yes, it's for you if you have some spare time, if you're keen to improve your video production skills. Um, if you have a, a phone to shoot with, it only needs to be a basic iPhone. Um, and also, one thing that a few of our musicians have found really useful is that PMM has been a way to build a customer base. Because every person who purchases a, a PMM from you um, is likely to be someone who could book you in future. So when they have an event coming up, they'll think, oh yeah, uh, Tom or Max was the person that produced that wonderful video for my birthday a few months ago. They'd be great for my wedding or my 60th birthday party, whatever. Um, so it's, it's, good. it's good for that as well. How does it work? The first step is you need to send your unique booking link to a customer. This is basically just your normal Encore uh, profile URL with slash gift added to the end of it. So this is an example of my URL. Once the customer clicks that link, 
they are then sent to a checkout form. Um, so uh, this is what it looks like. They're asked the type of occasion that they want the video to be produced for. They then enter the message that they'd like you to say at the start of the video and any lyric customization that they'd like to be inserted into the song. And um, then they're also asked when they'd like the video to be delivered. So it could be within four working days or they can pay an extra five pounds um, and it can be delivered within 24 hours. And they enter in their card details at the start. So whenever you produce one of these, you know that you're going to get paid at the end because the customer's already put down their card details. And just to say, the, the delivery time is a feature that we've uh, taken a lot of response from, from musicians about. Uh, we increased the basic delivery time to four days and you can also opt out of the same day delivery if that's too short notice for you. So you just need to go to your dashboard settings and untick the same day delivery option if you want to opt out of that. Pricing, we'd recommend you stick with the default price of 15 pounds per video. The videos, I should stress, should be fairly basic, just recording yourself with a phone. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, um, so nothing professionally produced, unless you'd like it to be. Um, this is, we'd obviously love to be able to get customers to, to pay much more for this, like 50 to 100 pounds, and some do, but the vast majority, when we surveyed them, were saying that they'd only be willing to pay between one and 20 pounds. So we wanted to make this, this work for you, and that's why 15 pounds is the recommended amount. Um, that said, we have a tipping feature, which means customers are able to easily add on an additional uh, 10, 20, 30 pounds to, uh, to your um, take home at the end. And if you need to change the price, you can just email us. So we're happy to change the price for you if 15 pounds isn't gonna work for you. Um, this just shows here how tipping works. This is a screenshot of the email that customers receive when you send them your finished product, your finished video. And all they need to do is click one of these buttons and it, we add on an additional five, 10 or whatever. Um, sometimes even a hundred pounds as one of our musicians had in a tip recently. Um, so we make it super easy for customers to increase the amount you earn per video. How do you get bookings? First of all, you need to produce some kind of marketing video, an example video like Max did. Um, it could just be simply uh, an, an example that you could produce for your friend or a family member, just saying, um, you know, hi mom, here's your favorite video. Uh, I know you love the Bee Gees. There you go. Um, and then you can use that as an example of what you can produce. Then you can upload it to social. We found that this is probably the best way to get bookings. Um, we want to be able to advertise PMMs on the site and we, we're doing this to a limited extent. Um, at the moment, but we found that the people who've been really successful with it have leveraged their social networks and their, their professional networks in order to get bookings, first of all, simply because it's much easier to sell to those types of people than, than to someone who's a, a cold lead and hasn't heard of you in the first place. A lot of people are buying these videos because they feel they have a special connection with the specific musician, and, and that's not possible if you're just sending a random person to a, an encore hosted landing page. Um, but we want to do both. And that's why, as James said, we've been promoting this using lots of PR and TechCrunch and The Times and Forbes. And we're also building a landing page that's going to be launched soon, which will include anyone who has signed up through our PMM dashboard. Um, so make sure you do that if you want to be included on our upcoming landing page. Um, but does it work? Well, James has already hinted at this. I think it's, there's some really promising signs that this is this has taken off. We've Some incredible success stories. This is a blog article that I published recently when I interviewed Sam Berkey, who's a singing pianist, uh, who managed to earn over a thousand pounds in around 14 days through PMM. And he told me in a call that it was a it was a lifeline for him because it managed to fill a gig-shaped hole um, at a time when all the gigs were being cancelled. Um, so definitely read that blog article if you want to see how it's worked for other musicians. Um, I've had great reactions from from the press and also from clients. James mentioned a lot of people are saying that they're, they're receiving these videos and they're kind of actually breaking down in tears just because it means so much to them at a time when a lot of people are isolated um, and they're feeling they can't celebrate or show affection to the people that they love in the way they would usually. So it, it's a meaningful thing to be doing with your time as well. And there's the NHS contribution. So if you want to get started, 
create that example video as I, as I suggested. We've got loads of resources explaining how to do this. We've got a blog post um, that includes links out to a video we produced explaining how to, to film a PMM. Um, we've got a webinar that we did a few weeks ago uh, where we, we talked through in detail how you can get the most from PMM. And um, we've produced a marketing playbook as well to help you approach people in a, in a kind of normal and non-salesy way explaining that you're doing this, this new project. Um, and we've also got a sign up dashboard. If you go to your, your normal Encore dashboard, you'll see there's this button here. You just need to click set up now in order to, to get going with personalized music messages. And it includes things like an example um, message that you can post on social media. And um, also, as I mentioned before, the option to edit your delivery time preferences and your price if you feel that you'd like to edit your price. So now I'd like to introduce Brazilian Sway. Um, as I mentioned before, they're one of our top duos on Encore. They've been with us about a year. Um, they started using PMM a month ago and they've since managed to earn over a thousand pounds using the feature. Um, they're one of my personal favorites as I'm a Brazilian percussionist myself and they produce really high quality videos. So um, before we hear from them, I thought I may as well just show you what they're doing with PMM um, in an actual video. So let's take a look. Let's dance. Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. Don't stop thinking about tomorrow. Don't stop. It'll soon be here. It'll be better than before. Yesterday's gone. Yesterday's gone. This goes out to the underdog. Keep on keeping out what you love and you'll find that someday soon enough you will rise up, rise up. I'm happy. Have a long Olha que coisa mais linda, mais cheia de graça Ela, menina que vem e que passa Num doce balança, caminho do mar Happy birthday, Marcel! Happy... Awesome. I hope that gives you an idea of the range of videos that Brazilian Sway have been producing at the moment. I think we had everything from Bowie to, to Bossa Nova uh, and everything in between. So I'm going to now try to add Carolina and Paul into our panelists and we, we can actually hear from them live. Um, I don't know if Kiara is able to do this or I'll do it. Um, I, um, I have upgraded you to host so that you can, cool. you know their tags and you can um, add them in. Carolina and Paul, who's the guitarist. Um, okay. Hi, Carolina. I think you're muted at the moment. If you unmute yourself. All right. Can you hear me now? I can. Yes. Okay. How are um, you guys doing? Welcome to the virtual stage. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and can you hear me? Are you able to get your video working? Oh, there we go. You're with us. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. It's Great. a pleasure. Um, so, first of all, I thought it'd be good if you could both introduce yourselves and how you set up Brazilian Sway and what, what you were doing, what you would be doing if it, you weren't in lockdown at the moment. Maybe Carolina, you can kick things off. Yeah. Um, so, I'm Carolina Lelis. Uh, I'm Brazilian. And I was born and raised in Brazil. And um, I'm also an actress. And, uh, what else? Oh, I've moved to London about a year ago. And I met Paul just a little uh, less um, under a year ago. And we started making music together. Uh, we started playing gigs and also busking together. And yeah, it's just been, it's been a roller coaster and it's been really fun. Great. What about you, Paul? Yeah, hi, I'm Paul. Um, I started Brazilian Sway a little while ago with another singer. We went back to Brazil and then um, I think it was last November um, I, I got to know of uh, Carolina looking for a new singer and um, found out she was absolutely fantastic and so we started working together we also have uh, an, a quartet 
on uh, Encore called uh, Sambossa. And um, yeah, so uh, the, our project basically is, is doing, with Brazilian Sway, is doing uh, pop and soul covers in Brazilian rhythms. So we'll take, um, like you saw, for example, we did Let's Dance by Bowie, but with a samba feel. And that's basically what we did. Great. And um, why did you first start using personalized music messages? What, what appealed to you about it? Well, I thought it was a great idea and I wasn't doing anything else, to be honest with you. And um, I, I don't really enjoy videoing myself very much, to be honest with you. But uh, and one of the things I've noticed, that it's been it's been good for me to sort of get over that sort of thing. And um, I feel much more comfortable with it now than I did uh, a month ago. That's great. Um, I noticed that the standard is quite high with the video, particularly given that you're a duo. How do you manage to, to get the standard that high while also making sure you're both in sync and um, you have the audio tracks and the video tracks all, all in sync? How does that work? Paul's an audio geek. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm also, as, as well as being a musician, I'm also an engineer and producer and I have my own little studio here. And so, yeah, audio is a bit my thing. and. Um, uh, basically, I record the first part of the um, of the process. I was using my iPad for the visuals and then recording the audio um, into my um, digital audio workstation on, on my computer. Uh, but now, since I've got this uh, new webcam, I'm going to be starting using that because I find that the quality of that actually better than the iPad. <clears throat> but um, yeah, uh, and then I send over the audio of, um, of what I've done to Carolina, and she listens to it in her, um, in her uh, earphones and records on her, on her iPhone. And we've also been using a Zoom um, camera, uh, camera microphone, which uh, is a bit like a GoPro. Mm. And uh, she, we've been using that for the audio because we found um, that better quality. But, um, <clears throat> We've got two to do today, and um, they'll be the first ones where we are actually, Carolina's now actually got herself a uh, digital audio um, workstation together with a proper mic, so we should be getting even better quality than before. Mm -hmm. I see. So you receive a PMM, comes into your email, and Paul, you produce the audio backing track first of all, yeah. and then Carolina then adds the lyrics on top and does a, does a track afterwards, and then I guess Paul pieces it together in, in a... Yeah. I put it together on uh, Sony Vegas, which is my video editing uh, thing. I mean, there's, there's loads of others that people use, but that's the one that I know. And um, it worked quite well, although it doesn't like um, the videos produced by iPhones. So I have to convert them first, which is a bit of a pain. Mm -hmm. But um, apart from that, we always find a way around. Yeah. And um, how did you work out what sort of price to go for? Um, obviously, it, it seems like it takes a while to produce these videos. How do you make sure it's, it's worth the time investment for you um, when you're doing PMMs? Well, I think the initial price of £15 just wasn't working for us. Hmm. Um, so we had to double it really to, to, to £30 before it was worthwhile. Even so, it does take time. And hmm. luckily, that's something we've all got at the moment. So. I'm not doing anything else. Before I was doing this, I was basically going for long walks and uh, lying in a hammock all day. So um, it's been something to do. And um, the more you do it, the, the better you get at it. And it streamlined the process uh, to, and uh, I'm getting better at videoing myself. So I'm doing much more, I'm getting them down first takes and um, it's becoming a, a process that's becoming all the time easier. Hmm. Yeah, I think like, like, like with anything else in the beginning, you know, you're like, oh, is this going to be worth it? But the more you do it, the, it, the more it's worth. And yeah, mm -hmm. so we're, we're, we're doing them fairly quick now. And have you found you've received a good reaction from the people that you've received, who, who, who you've sent them to? Yeah, we've had, we've had really, really nice um, uh, people that have come through. Uh, through Encore and some of them are, you know, friends and and acquaintances of Paul 
uh, because he's been here for a long time. And so he's been sharing it a lot in his media. I've, I've shared it on my media as well, but I have mostly people in Brazil mm. and uh, people love it. People love it. And it's really, uh, it's really brought a joy into their lives. Um, and I think that the reaction, like, like somebody said at some point, you know, people get emotional. Um, and then sometimes they might order, they might commission one, one video and then next week they're commissioning another video for another relative or for another friend. So it really kind of gives them the idea that this is a, a new sort of presence that you can give people. And that's the really cool thing about it, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, if you had to give some advice to, to musicians listening on how to actually get started and, and get the videos coming in, all, all the booking requests, what, what would you say? What's been the, the best method for you of receiving PMMs? Well, um, for us, actually, um, we haven't got a lot of um, requests coming from our past bookings um, and, and what have you. I know, I know some people have, but for me, I've actually got a lot of requests through my, um, because I'm a big football fan and I go and I'm, my team is uh, Spurs. And I um, visit a, um, a message board, and I've been on this message board for years. And I, um, and most of the people there know I'm a musician. I just posted something about the uh, the the PMM service, and suddenly it took off. And I think probably nearly half of our um, requests have been from there. And the others have, have been successful. That my wife is a yoga teacher. And she's been um, publicizing it with her yoga students. And, and, and that's been very good as well. I think the, the main message is don't be scared to be pushy. You, you've got to be a little bit if you're going to sell it. So, um, okay, you might get some people who think, oh, God, they're really pushing this thing. What, what, why are they doing that? But if you don't sort of push it out there, then you, you won't really get very many um, requests. That's my experience anyway. Mm. And one thing to bear in mind as well is that one way of talking about it is that it's a charity project. Some of your earnings are going to charity. It's not just like a normal gig booking. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and I think one thing also, which is nice and it kind of um, helped me is that we usually have the means to do it. You know, like right now I have just natural light coming through. And in the beginning, that's all you need. You know, you start with natural light with a phone use the mic on the phone, obviously try to get into a room that doesn't have too much noise. And then, as, you know, the more you do it, the better the quality is going to be, the more you're going to be looking for, you know, new um, equipment. And yeah, like Paul said, I think uh, really letting people know that this is a new option uh, of giving people presence is really nice. It's not just pushing your work, it's really giving them a, new, a whole new way of uh, paying homage to someone you like. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Right, well, I'd love to chat to you guys for another 15 minutes or half an hour, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to wrap up there. But thanks so much for joining us, Carolina and Paul. And if anyone Thank has you. a question for them, feel free to drop it in, in the chat and I'm sure they'll be happy to, to talk to you about it. And do check out their, their PMMs or on their Facebook as well. Just type in Brazilian Sway and you can check them all out there. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I think we have to kick you out. <laughs> very <That's long>. fine. <laughs> I'm just doing that now. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, now we're going to be hearing from James King, our Chief Technical Officer and co-founder about the teaching app. Um, so James, you there. Great, thanks Johnny. Hi everyone. Um, now I'm going to daringly assume that this screen share just works and hope that one of my colleagues will give me a shout if it doesn't. So let me just get this up. Okay. Um, well, I'm hugely excited uh, today to be able to tell you about a project which, um, a really ambitious project actually, which we've been working on since the start of lockdown. Um, and that is this, helping teachers to deliver remote music lessons in a way that not only safe, particularly when working with children, um, but also actually enhances what teachers can do in the lessons. Um, so I'm going to tell you a, a bit more about, about the problems we saw and the reasons we decided this was a really important thing to do. 
Um, and then I'll go ahead and actually show you what we've been able to build so far. Um, and then I'll uh, let you know a bit about uh, the uptake that we've already seen from that. So uh, when the world was turned upside down back in uh, mid-March, in the UK at least, um, we saw two big problems with what happened to music teaching across the country, uh, particularly looking at the schools who were frantically um, trying to find ways to go remote. Um, so uh, let me tell you a bit about those, those things. Firstly, uh, is safeguarding. Now, uh, it's not fun for anyone to, to think about what the worst case scenarios are when it comes to inappropriate behavior or false allegations uh, in a teacher-student relationship. But it is absolutely vital that this is done correctly because the nature of a one-to-one -one student teacher relationship is one that puts people into quite a vulnerable position. Um, and this isn't just from the child's point of view. Um, if there's an allegation against a teacher, even if it's completely false, that can make it difficult to ever get another teaching job. Um, so this is a really serious thing. Um, and here's the problem. The other video tools out there, like Zoom, are built for businesses. Um, and so they rely on being used correctly. Um, that means things like uh, everyone following the right security protocols, um, enabling and storing recordings, and so on. Um, and when you're working with children and safeguarding is paramount, that's just not good enough. So schools try and get around this. They, they create policies um, which frankly aren't enforceable and um, basically parents aren't able to go through with them. Um, and the problem is teachers aren't incentivized to call this out because um, the likely scenario there is that they'll simply lose those lessons and the parent won't want to carry on. Um, so this is really not a great situation. Um, the other thing that can happen, of course, is the schools simply um, cancel lessons in the face of these problems. And so teachers lose work entirely. Um, and we've seen that that's happened quite a bit. Now, the second problem we saw was that Zoom just isn't built for music lessons. Um, none of the tools that, that we saw being used were. Um, and so the obvious results of this are uh, teachers spend lots of time on things like admin, trying to work out how to schedule different Zoom calls every week with all of their pupils, um, which for a busy school-based teacher can be a, a, actually a really complex challenge and a big headache. It's also not ideal when it comes to the audio quality. So these conferencing apps, they, they are really great, but they've basically been built to transmit voices um, as we're using them now, uh, not the sounds of instruments and all the crucial variations in tone and dynamics that you need to be able to hear as a, a teacher or a, or a pupil. But perhaps even more than these, we, we thought, well, what could we do with a tool that was actually designed for teachers? How could we try not just to replicate a normal lesson experience, but actually add features that could even improve it? So I've spent a while on those problems because I think they're really important to understand this, but I'll, I'll jump through now and we'll, we'll look at what we actually decided to do about this. So first up, we, uh, we joined forces with a company called PracticePal, who are experts in online music education. So they had an existing service which helps children to practice using an app in a way which is complementary to lessons. Um, so they were experts in both education, but also safeguarding with children. Um, and we decided that together we'd be perfectly placed to attack this problem of how can you do lessons online. And the second thing we did was we, we ran a, a wide scale survey of how Encore members who were teaching were going about that. Um, if you're here and you responded to that survey, let me just say thank you so much. Um, that's really been helpful for us. And it's helped us understand the frustrations people are having as they face trying to teach online. Um, and I'm going to share a couple of the, the things that came out of that with you now. So one of the really interesting things was to hear what exactly are the, the difficulties uh, with using a tool like Zoom. So you, you can see those listed here from the, the issues that came up most at the top. So uh, we've got the likely suspects, things like the delays and the lag that you get, uh, the sound quality. Um, also some, some really interesting things like uh, how the sound cuts out when 
a different person tries to speak in Zoom, you might notice that uh, the difficulties with setting up meetings, uh, security issues, um, lots of things there. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with some of these frustrations. The other thing we, we saw is that um, whilst 89% of our teachers are teaching under 18 year olds, only 17% of them have any form of concern around safeguarding. And that was a real worry for us because um, of course, as individuals, we never think that we're gonna be the one who has a problem with one of our lessons. Um, but, but we know as a company that safeguarding is a genuine risk online. Uh, and it's something that every teacher does need to give some thought to. So what have, what have we done about all of this? Well, skipping forward a few weeks and many, many energy drinks, uh, I want to show you now our new teaching app, which we've developed. And I'll just talk you fairly briefly through a couple of the features that we've got. So this is our lesson room. This is what you would see as a teacher. Uh, and obviously front and centre there, we've got the pupils video. Uh, that's shared securely and directly from their app onto your screen here. Um, and it's, it's high quality, so we prioritise the quality of that, particularly the audio quality. And uh, the whole, the, their video is not recorded, but the whole audio of your lesson is recorded for safeguarding purposes. Moving around the screen a bit, um, on the left we've got notes which you can write for uh, the parents and the pupils benefit so that they can uh, refer to those when they're practicing in the week. Uh, you're also able to write some private notes so you can keep tabs on uh, your pupils progress with notes to yourself. On the right hand side we've got uh, sheet music so this is um, this music is sent by the pupil so they'll take a picture of their music um, and send you that so you can see exactly what it is that they're working off. And very soon, you're going to be able to draw and write onto that music, and the pupil will see that come through in real time. So it will be just like what you would be able to do on paper as you scribble on their sheet music in a lesson. And, oh, and in the bottom right-hand corner there, you've got your own video. So that's only shared with the pupil when you choose to. And when you do that, it's also recorded. So that recording, that's not just for safeguarding. That's also a really helpful tool for the pupil because in their app, they can, uh, through the week, they can come back and watch those videos that you recorded during the lesson. Um, so we think that's actually gonna be a really helpful tool for teaching. Now, all of these, uh, these lessons, they start and they end automatically according to a schedule. Um, the parent and the pupil get emailed about those and they get reminders as well for the lesson. So you don't have to do any of the admin work around this. In fact, you can even sit on this same page and take back-to-back -back lessons, and it will automatically switch between your different pupils as each lesson finishes and the next one begins. And this is the page where you, you set up those lessons. So uh, here are the, the three lessons I have with myself this week, apparently. Um, so we've, we've, after speaking to teachers, we've tried to make this really easy to have a schedule that's flexible, but also will generally be the same week to week. So you can very easily copy lessons week to week and have them fill in at the same time. Um, but you can just drop, drag and drop them around this calendar really easily. And when you're done, you hit the big blue button and that sends all the confirmation emails out to the parents and locks your lessons in. Just to fairly quickly show you the pupil side of this. Um, they have an app which sits on, uh, it'll work on an Android or an iPhone device. And basically what it does is it guides them through joining a lesson, getting their phone set up, um, and then letting you see and hear each other. And there's not so much to say here because um, our aim is basically to keep this simple and not interfere with the lesson experience. Um, obviously they can see their own video, that will get replaced by your video as a teacher, if you share that with them. Um, and then they can see their sheet music as well, which uh, you might be annotating on throughout the lesson. So that's been a bit of a whistle-stop tour of, of the app that we've got. Um, I hope some of you will go and try it out for yourselves. Um, but I just wanted to finish by telling you a bit about what the uptake of this has been like. 
uh, which has been really exciting. So at the moment, we've got one uh, private school using this full time with all of their staff. Uh, that means we've got uh, over 200 pupils having regular lessons with this. Uh, they've had over 700 lessons, actually, which has uh, added up to 25,000 recorded minutes of lessons already taken through this, through this platform. Um, so it's hugely exciting. It's, it's shown this that uh, there really is a need for this. Um, and we've got quite a number of schools in the pipeline to uh, get signed up very soon. So we're really excited about where this is going. Um, but I'm very happy to announce that we are in a position now where any individual teacher can also go ahead and sign up to this. So if this sounds interesting to you, you've perhaps identified with, with some of those difficulties that I mentioned earlier, um, you can go ahead and you can sign up without needing to be uh, linked to a school who's using this. Um, and I'll just leave this on the screen for a sec if you want to, to jot down the notes here. Basically, if you, if you look for Practice Pal Teach, that's the, the name of the tool at the moment, and you can sign up for that for free. Uh, normally, that would be a one week free trial. If you get in touch with us and just sort of reference this webinar, uh, we'll be happy to extend that to a two week trial. So you can have a, a good play around with this, uh, add any number of pupils, any number of lessons, they're all securely recorded. That's all included as part of an individual membership. And if you do that, we'd, we'd love to hear what you think. Please do get in touch. Um, we always really value your feedback. So that is all. Um, I think probably because we're running a bit behind, we'll uh, skip the Q&A and be able to answer those later. Uh, but please do get in touch. Uh, my email address is there and we respond to every email that comes in. So thank you very much. Thanks, James. Um, there's just a, a couple of questions that came in. I wondered if you could quickly answer them for us. So one person is asking about, um, are we planning multiple camera support for lessons? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so in the short term, unfortunately, the answer is no, because that adds a real challenge to the way that we can do our safeguarding and our recordings in a way that is affordable for you as a teacher. Um, so at the moment, we've, we feel that getting the, the core lesson experience right was more important than, than being able to do that. But it is on our radar as something that a few teachers have found really valuable. So thank you for that question. It's, it's on our list, but it's not in the short term. And Maria was asking, can the student app be used on a PC or just iPad or phone? Yeah, another great question. At the moment, it is just on mobile devices. Um, but yes, that does include iPads and Android tablets. Um, again, we are looking at adding that for computers in the future. Uh, but so far, every pupil we've had has had access to a, a mobile device. So at the moment, that, that hasn't been an issue for any of our teachers. Great. And Gwen was asking about integration for, with existing software like music stuff. Um, I don't think we have that yet, do we? No, I, I don't know the details of that. Um, the one thing I can mention is that if you have a, a plugin or a tool which changes your, your webcam view, so uh, software like OBS, that will work with the tool so that you can, uh, you can do, be a bit more creative about what you share through your own camera rather than just uh, the, the video of yourself. Um, that is something that some of our teachers have used. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I think we'll leave it there with the questions. Um, if you have any more questions, remember to put them in the Q&A. I think there are a few coming into the, the chat. It just helps us to keep track of the questions that are coming in if you put it into the Q&A section. Um, so finally, um, I'd like to welcome John Jin up to give us a demonstration of his live streaming. Um, as I said, we tried it out on Monday. John Jin's very experienced uh, using a live streaming and has done a number of paid gigs using the setup that he's going to showcase. Um, so if you're curious about how live streaming works, this is definitely for you. Um, I'm just going to add him to uh, the panelists now. Um, and then... Great. Are you there, John Jun? I think you're still muted at the moment. There's an, there's an empty stage. <clears throat> yeah. 
Let's check, check. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I can hear you okay. That's Perfect. great. Uh, it's, um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for, for um, having me up. And it's, um, it's a pleasure to be performing for so many musicians. And I hope everyone's doing okay. It's a really hard time for everyone. Um, so massive kind of um, thoughts out to everyone there. Um, do you have any questions for me before I play? Or do you want me to play a bit? And then, or how do you want to do it? I think it's best if you, if you give us a, a well, you know, show us what you can do. And then we'll ask how your setup works and how you've been using live streaming your day to day at the moment. Sure. Um, can we just double check I'm definitely audible on my guitar there? That's definitely audible, loud and clear. Sounds great. Cool. Is that too loud? Is that okay for you? Perfect, I think. Was that okay? Was that clipping or anything? Was that all right? Crystal clear. Incredible. Perfect. Great. I think I'll hand over to our own live streaming wizard of the Encore team, George, um, who's going to ask a few questions. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Cheers to that. Um, that was that was amazing and like super clear. Um, I can't quite believe we were watching that over Zoom. Um, yeah. Uh, I've done a little bit of um, live stream myself and always find that it's a uh, it's a real fight to get, you know, perfect audio, perfect video, perfect clarity. Um, so just wondering what sort of setup you had, what um, door are you using? Are you using any sort of uh, software to broadcast from your laptop or anything like that? Um, just talk us through your setup, really. So I'll preface this um, just by saying all of my setup, including pictures of, um, of my behind the scenes, uh, will be in a kind of zip folder or some kind of downloadable folder that I've sent to you guys. So if you don't catch it right now, if you, there's a certain question, I've written it all out so you can, um, you can find it all on there. But basically, um, what I'm using is a uh, sound interface. Everything's going into the sound interface. Um, absolutely nothing is being recorded or, or streamed through a phone's microphone. It's um, a pretty low-cost microphone here, but EQ'd. Um, as much as I can and the guitar um, its pickup is going wirelessly um, for those of you who don't know where the guitar audio is coming from there's no microphone for the guitar but it's got a, um, a pickup built in and a wireless um, kind of uh, transmitter there uh, so I'm going straight into a sound interface into my laptop I'm processing all the audio with compression EQ Etc., uh, and then that's being output into Zoom. 
Awesome. So you're using the um, the compression in EQ. Is that through Logic or, or something similar? Correct. I'm I'm not a studio guy massively um, at all, but I can do bits and bobs. Um, and so yes, it's just the basic tools in stu in, uh, in Logic that I'm using. Awesome. And what I've got is um, I'm not recording. I've got all my recording inputs as monitoring. So as I make a sound, Logic outputs that sound. If I've got any effects on that channel, it outputs the sound with the effects. And I route that audio output from Logic into Zoom or m more often than not actually into OBS, which is what I normally use to broadcast with. Okay, so for people who don't know OBS, I've, I've tried a little bit um, of OBS and it's pretty scary if you're using it for the first time. And I spent a lot of time watching like uh, YouTube tutorials and stuff. Um, so you're basically sending the audio from Logic of all your recorded stuff or, or the uh, monitoring stuff, I should say. Um, and then you're using something like Soundflower, whatever I'm saying, that sends it to OBS. Um, and that is a way to sort of route the audio from logic to a broadcast software is that right absolutely correct yeah um and actually in in a very similar way as i'm routing the audio from somewhere else i'm also routing the video from somewhere else now at the beginning of lockdown i i decided okay i, I need to find a way to make money because I, I, there's no way i'm not making any money at the moment and i need to do something um so i was going to start streaming despite hating it i have to say how much i hated the concept i like being in control of everything when i'm performing and i'm sure a lot of us are the same and the streams that i did see uh, kind of going on the audio quality was terrible as well as the video quality as well as the general scene um and i didn't want to be associated with anything like that so i was very much um very much against streaming at first but then i kind of thought okay right, let's try it out um video wise I quite quickly found that a lot of the um, the webcams and the kind of streaming cams, they were either all sold out or their prices were massively hiked uh, on Amazon and other tech websites. Um, so I, I just kind of thought, well, what have I got that's got a camera? I've got a phone. I've got a phone lying around that I'm not using. And actually that phone's camera was way better than my um, laptop's inbuilt um, kind of FaceTime camera anyway. So I'm using free software that lets you hook up a phone's camera to your laptop and use that as a video source. So instead of spending 80 to like 250 quid on a, on a kind of streaming camera, I just, I'm using that. And so far it's, it's working okay. It's not the best quality in the world, but um, if you use something like OBS, you can actually uh, kind of adjust the entire image before broadcast anyway. So you can increase the quality quite a lot through there. Mm. And also uh, one thing to know about OBS as well is that you can use multiple cameras as well. So if you wanted to have your laptop camera and an external camera, whether that's your phone or a webcam, uh, you can do that and flick between the two and that can look uh, a little bit more professional. Um, and just um, a quick question, just because we had one from Debbie in the Q&A. She said, um, are you going to, uh, like, can we use your video on YouTube or live stream? So just so we're clear, OBS, you can send your video to YouTube, Facebook, anywhere else. Can, and stuff. Can you search a bit more on that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I use OBS to stream to YouTube, um, Twitch, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, there's another little uh, application. If you're on Mac, it's called Yellow Duck. Um, I'm not sure what the Windows equivalent is, but there is one to allow you to stream from a laptop using all your digital audio workstation, using all your processing to the Instagram live feed. So that doesn't have to always be on phone at all. Most people think it has to be. It doesn't have to be. And so, yeah, to be clear, I use OBS to stream to Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, twi uh, Twitch. Oh, that's amazing. I had no idea you could use it for Instagram as well. Yeah. Um, so I'll check out Yellow Duck for sure. Um, yeah, so uh, how many live streaming gigs have you done so far? And do you think that it's sort of sustainable? I'm not sure if it is sustainable. I think at the moment there's a huge gap for corporate clients particularly where their workforce is all at home working together apart and they want to engage socially together in something and if they hire a musician to stream for them um, it's, it's a gig that all of the workforce can watch apart but they're watching together is something that they can socially uh, engage with together and it's just something very fresh and interesting for them so mm -hmm. i found that that's a, a particular niche that I'm, I'm kind of it seems to be doing well uh, I've done six so far um, and I was really surprised with the money being offered again because it's these corporate clients 
who normally they would have a social um, kind of employee benefit kind of um, budget. Mm. And that budget isn't being used at the moment. Um, they, they can't do the traditional things of going out socializing. So they want to use that budget somehow. So, for example, for playing um, four tracks, I was paid £200. For playing um, three tracks on a different occasion, I was paid 150 So it's, it's kind of a, it generated quite a lot of interest in me because I was kind of like, okay, well, this is pretty decent money. This is good money for me for the amount of tracks I'm playing and for the fact that I can actually broadcast from my home. So I, I've kind of delved into it, and, and that's why I've got this set up now, which... It took a while to get going, but now I think it's quite solid and, and the quality is acceptable. I have to say the quality for me on Zoom is the worst possible option. How, wh why, why do you think that is on Zoom compared to other platforms? Because of the nature of Zoom being two-way, um, I, I think, and very, very kind of throwaway. You know, most of the time you're not keeping uh, the recording of a conference call all the time. And it just wasn't designed for music, as mm -hmm. um, as was mentioned. I think as James mentioned, it's just it wasn't designed for music at all. Um, so yeah, it's just not not ideal. However, I'm hoping that the audio quality of me playing earlier and maybe even my voice now should be acceptable. It should be okay, or, or at least a cut above some other music that has been played through Zoom previously by anyone um, in in you know in everyone's experiences. Um, there's specific settings in Zoom that you can change, which massively help. And uh, I've, in the document that I've made for you guys, which will be sp um, spread out to all you musicians, um, I've detailed them really, really clearly with screenshots. But basically, in, in the audio settings and advanced audio settings, there's tick boxes that you just want to get rid of, which is the processing that Zoom does. Amazing, amazing. Uh, yeah, that's super helpful. Um, one last question I uh, have. Um, uh, what do you wish you'd known um, if you were starting out um, with your live streaming experience again start of lockdown um as you said you weren't uh, live streaming wasn't for you i was the same um what do you wish you'd known and what sort of resources do you wish were available to you then and uh, any advice for any musicians who um haven't done the whole live streaming experience as in depth as you have um so yeah totally i came at it from the angle of i really don't want to be doing this mm -hmm. i'm really un uncomfortable with this um, the technical side of things produces so many variables. Anything can fail. I don't like relying on my laptop for being able to perform at all. Um, but what I would say is there's a, there's a USP to um, live streaming, which I didn't realize. And I don't know if, uh, if anyone out there is a busker or has busked, um, but I, I've busked um, for many years uh, across Europe. And you quite quickly learn with busking that what you put out you kind of get back um, and it's its own platform for performing. It's its own medium, different than uh, a normal gig, different than um, a kind of broadcast gig. And the USP for streaming is that um, between tracks or even during tracks, you can observe the audience's responses and through a chat and, and stuff like that, they might ask you a question in between tracks and you can there and then respond completely kind of transparently. And that's a it actually brings the performer and the audience together much closer than, than any other medium that I can kind of think of, apart from maybe busking. Um, and I never considered that as a USP for streaming, but actually I really, really like it. A, a great example is one of the first ones I've done uh, after my first track. Um, I saw on the chat uh, one of the kind of corporate clients, they kind of asked, oh, you know, what were your favorite guitarists growing up? And I was just about to go into the first track, but then I kind of saw his message and I, I was like, oh, um, Hey John, uh, so my guitarists were, da, 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 and then we had a little discussion, and then I was able to get into the next track, and I think that's just really, really cool. Um, the nature of the internet, I think, in general, because we've all got screens in front of us, it means people are a lot more candid, and actually that was a really positive thing um, with with streaming. Um, I'd say what I wish I would have known. Um, the technical side, definitely. Uh, I'll, I'll mention two things. Number one, if you can increase your upload bandwidth on your internet, um, do. I started with 5 meg um, and I upgraded to 150 meg upload speed and that, that was an absolute game changer. Um, and number two, um, buy a tripod because for ages I was trying to balance this camera on these books and stuff and salt shakers and like, pepper grinders and I just kind of was like, man, just, just buy a tripod. So yeah, I bought it. <laughs> 
there's a four pound tripod that I bought from Amazon, which works fine. And there's also a 14 pound one, which also works fine. I wouldn't pay any more than that, but yeah, buy a tripod. Yeah, I think we've all been there trying to balance our phone on various bits and bobs um, that yeah. you can find around the room. Um, yeah, massive, massive thanks uh, for taking the time to perform for us, Dungeon. And uh, um, I don't know if there are any questions. Oh, James is going to answer a couple of questions. So I'll just hand over to James, but I'd just like to say massive thank you to Dungeon for joining us um, and for all the info on live streaming. And yeah, as he said, there's going to be a resource that we can send around um, with everything that he mentioned today. Thank you and, and hope everyone's doing okay. Thanks. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you so much for that. That was absolutely incredible. And yeah, I genuinely cannot believe that what we were hearing there was live um, through Zoom. Um, we've actually had a couple of questions in the Q&A uh, from James and from Georgia um, about offering live streaming gigs on Encore and whether this is something that we're going to be working on. Um, the answer is yes. Um, and we have started working on this already. We've already had some live stream gigs booked through Encore and we've had some incredible fees paid out to musicians uh, playing like remote birthday parties, for example. Um, I just wanted to do a quick experiment actually with everyone who's, who's still here and who's made it to the end. Um, apparently there are 62 of us still in this webinar at the moment. Um, if, you are, if you are listening to me and if you can hear me right now, um, have you been booked for a paid live stream gig before? Like, have you been paid a fee to perform for two people or 200 people um, over the internet? Um, and if you can go into the chat and just put a yes or no, um, we will, okay, there's a lot of no's coming in already. Um, we will tally them up at the end. Um, if you have, like, please do um, post a little comment on, um, on, on what the gig was. Um, I'm looking at the chat, all I'm seeing is no's. So um, yeah, there's clearly something that we need to um, get working on um, and get started with. Um, and yeah, thank you so much um, for, for giving us your time um, and for coming along and, and listening. Um, I think Johnny was planning to wrap up now. Um, yeah, I just actually, is John still there? Oh, he's not. Um, I don't think he mentioned that he was actually using, he mentioned it at the very start, he was using two Zoom accounts. He, you might have noticed he had uh, his John John account and then also a, a Stella account. So he could probably explain better and I'm sure it's mentioned elsewhere, but he was using one Zoom account in order to send the audio out and one zoom account to um for the, for the audio in so that's just something to to bear in mind that you didn't mention um but yeah we'll send around that in the blog post later um but if, if anyone has any particular questions now's the best time to ask because we can maybe take like a couple more questions before we wrap up um and yeah i was also interested to know which john john's favorite guitarists were I missed my opportunity. Um, leave a couple of moments in case anyone has a question. So looks, Lilac is just wondering when we take ideas or suggestions. Um, if anyone has any ideas for things that we could add, feel free to just drop us an email at help at Encore Musicians. Um, Chris is wondering, or Adam's wondering, will the video be shared? Yes, this whole uh, webinar is going to be shared after like later today or tomorrow um ian's wondering if we're going to expand the teaching app to more institutions we're currently engaged with talks in a number of schools so we're planning to definitely expand uh, in in grammar schools private schools and who knows maybe universities and beyond but that's that's far in the future uh, it's worth saying as well that if any any teachers who are listening at the moment are um, working in a school and would like to sort of try out our teaching app with that school um, then please do email us um, it's teach at encoremusicians.com um, if you think that your school would like to to try this out great brilliant i think we'll leave it there um because we're running out of time but thanks so much for joining us um a few things you could do now are sign up to the, the teaching app if you want um that was uh, teaching at encoremusicians.com if you send us an email there. Um, you can also sign up to personalized music messages if you want via your dashboard. Just head to your dashboard at encoremusicians.com slash dashboard. Um, or if you would like to know more about live streaming, John John's blog post will be sent around very soon. So do check that out. Um, but other than that, if you have any feedback on how this Encore Drinks Online went, do drop us an email. 
Um, this is the very first Uncle Drinks Online we've done, so we're really interested to know which bits you enjoyed, which bits could be improved, um, and we hope to be doing one of these again uh, in the next month or so. So um, do join us again for our next Uncle Drinks. But other than that, on behalf of everyone on the team, thanks so much for joining us, and um, see you at the next one. Hi everyone, thanks so much. Hi everyone. Bye. Bye everyone.